Hi, it's Player Ban! Hey everyone, Loretta was just released today. It's a psychological thriller and the gameplay seems to be very similar to the Cat Lady series, if anyone has ever heard of that. I'm super excited. Uh, I think what we're going to do is that we're going to try to help Loretta get her revenge on her husband and other characters, I presume? Alright, let's get started. All right, since it's our first gameplay, uh, I guess we will do color mode. The game's events take place in the United States of America in 1947. To reflect the reality of that time, Loretta contains subject matter that some may find offensive. Characters, due to their nature, age, and social status, use words, phrases, and profanities that are indicative of the time and do not correspond with modern attitudes. All events and characters depicted in the game are entirely fictitious. Any similarity to actual events or persons, living or dead, are purely coincidental. Think carefully before you begin the game and play responsibly. I think it had heard whispered to him about things about himself which he did not know, things of which he had no conception until he took counsel with this great solitude. Oh gosh, dang it. That was way too fast. <laughs> but anyways, highly recommend The Heart of Darkness if you've never read it before. It's a pretty good book. 1947. <laughs> Everything's apparently black and white except that car. I guess I'll just uh, s skip this video of this car going down a very windy path. Oh, okay, okay. Well, let, let, let's see some credits here. Anyways, this seems like a like a point and click uh, game, and it has a lot of dialogue. Oh, oh, Loretta. <laughs> All right, my name's Loretta Lou Harris. Friends call me Laura. I'm 38 years old. I was born in a small town in the south that y'all probably never heard of. All right, should I give her like a, like a, like a, a, a southern accent? Is that okay? The moment I turned 16, I ran away to the east coast. I'm an unemployed ornithologist and a mediocre housewife. A few months ago, my husband and I moved to a farm that he got from his parents. Life here ain't exactly simple, but we get by all the same. Up until two weeks ago, anyway, when Walter up and disappeared without a trace. Mrs. Harris? Alright, so this is Chambers, I'm guessing. I'm Frank Chambers. I'm looking for your husband. You from the police? Now, I hardly talk to the sheriff. I ain't got nothing more to say. <laughs> no, ma'am. I'm leading a private investigation. There are some people from New York, important people, who really like to have a word with Mr. Harris. <laughs> well, tell them to get in line. And who are these important people? I didn't catch your last name. I'll ask her. And who are these important people? People who Mr. Harris still needs to pay. Mind if I come in? Where's your badge, officer? He wipes his neck with a handkerchief. You've got a, a very lovely house, ma'am. Don't bother. I can't stand this place either. Is this Mr. Harris's house? His parents. You're not from around here, are you? Or New York for that matter? Don't test my hospitality. Sorry, I didn't mean to offend. I'm paid to ask questions, uh, you know. But my only concern is Mr. Harris. Mainly, I need to know if he's alive or dead. Alright, I guess we'll just stand there. I can't leave Chambers alone. All right. There's a clock. <laughs> this thing gets on my nerves. Sometimes it feels like I can hear a ticking from all the way in the bedroom. <laughs> oh, there's just an axe here. <laughs> Ma'am? How long has Mr. Harris been gone for? 
Who hired you? Wants something to drink. I'll ask him who hired you. Who hired you? Why don't you start off by telling me who it was that hired you? <clears throat> no, of course. I work for a firm uh, called Wallace and Partners. I represent the interest of Mr. Wallace. Here's my card. Let me just give it to you uh, from across the room here. Oh, okay. <laughs> Actually, I have to go grab it. Frank Chambers, private investigator. Lives in New York. All right, all right. Your husband owes Mr. Wallace a substantial sum of money, ma'am. Do Mr. Harrison mention anything about that to you? I reckon your services cost a lot more than that. <laughs> I don't charge that much. I don't. Whew. Beads of sweat far from uh, Chambers' face and onto his wrinkled shirt. Can I get you something to drink? The kitchen's just down the hall. <laughs> let me just look at this axe again. Oh man, won't let me look at it. I done lost count of how many times I asked Walter to throw this nasty old thing away. <sighs> oh. Hey, you're, you're not gonna answer that? I guess I will. Hello? Hello? Can, oh, sorry, that's the voice. <clears throat> Can I talk to Mr. Harris, please? <laughs> Who's calling? May I ask who's calling? Uh, this is Patrick Fitzgerald uh, from the Atlantic Press uh, Publishing House. Uh, would you uh, kindly put Mr. Harris on the phone? It's extremely urgent. Mr. Harris ain't available. He ain't here. Well, uh, what time will he be back? Miss? Uh, this is about his book. We're still waiting for him to send the second half. The contracts are ready, but uh, Miss, could you please pass? They hung up. It happens sometimes. I guess she's been getting a lot of phone calls from uh, her husband's publishing company. Let's take a look at this hat. <laughs> Walter's hat. He bought it. Uh, he bought it in New York. All right, all right. Let's go get uh, Mr. Chambers some water. Oh, he, he he's already in the kitchen. All right. Frayed lemonade is all I can offer. Just why would be fine with me, ma'am? I'm a tad parched uh, from that long drive. <laughs> All right. Oh, there's just poison in the cabinet. Uh, that's a real nice almond smell in there. And let me just uh, close this. <laughs> there's just a sickle here too. Oh, I can't in interact with it. All right. Nice open window. Uh, let me gl grab this glass for you. And then, uh, let me see if I can, uh, where I get some lemonade? From the fridge? Oh, from the sink. Okay. Oh, sorry. He doesn't want lemonade. He just wants water. This humidity is killing me. He wipes his face with a handkerchief. I don't think it's been this hot since the spring of 39. Where's that music coming from? The fields. Farmers. Walter rents out the land. Yes, the music helps them pass the time. His eyes linger on Laura's hips. She pretends not to notice. Whoa. Walter, are you looking at Laura out here? Laura out here? <laughs> Alright, hold on. I'm gonna turn up the volume a little bit. Seems that there's not a lot of music going on in this, in this game. Alright. All right, so, uh, <laughs> quite the shame for a fine lady like yourself to be stuck out in a place like this. Here's Iwata. You are too kind. Thank you. He dries his lips on his sleeves. So how much land have you got here, ma'am? Sixty or so acres. <laughs> he whistles. I can't whistle. Don't get too excited. It was mortgaged a long while back. May I take a look at your yard? Suit yourself. What in the... It's the pipes. Son of a... Got some plumbing stalled. And what do you know? Sorry. I need to go down to the basement. Uh, need a hand? Nah. No need to trouble yourself. Besides, you want to look around the place? 
Didn't you? <laughs> what do you got in the pipes, Loretta? And hold on, dang. Let me turn that, uh, my volume down. Jeez, that pipe made a big noise. All right, let's take a look at this calendar here. Another month's flown by. This catalog here? Anything? No? Okay. All right, let's, uh, go down to the, the basement. It's damp and dark down in the basement. Too damp and too dark. Smells like mold. Just like Chamber's breath, actually. Oh, it's it's Loretta's thinking. I can hardly find the water pipes. At first glance, everything seems to be in order. But there's a weird buzzing sound coming from them. <laughs> Let's look closer and, uh... <laughs> probably jump scare. Looks like something's stuck in one of them. Hard to say what exactly. <laughs> All right, let's do it, everyone. Let's try to pull it out. I hold up my hand and touch something wet and hairy. I grab hold of it and tug. A dead rat. Could have been worse. Buzz and stop for now. Loretta, go wash your hands. <laughs> Looks like Chambers went out to the yard. Can I wash my hands? Jeez, and what did you do with that rat? Do 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 Tell me, Mrs. Harris, where do you think your husband might be? Got any ideas? <laughs> He's in the well. I straight up murdered him, <laughs> officer. Uh, I don't, maybe he'll back to New York. Uh, I'll say this. I don't, no clue. I have no idea what Welta is, and I don't want to know, truth be told. Well, I can understand that. Mr. Harris, uh, he was a queer, wasn't he? Was? I mean, why else would he leave a gorgeous woman like you in his own house to go on the lam like this? Begging your pardon, ma'am, but he must have been out of his dang mind. Anyway, ma'am, thank you for your time. Sorry you had to come all this way for nothing, but I really don't think I can help. It's fine. It's what I paid to do. Thanks again for the water. Sorry I bothered you. All right, well, that's, uh, I, I was not expecting that. Okay. My name is Laurieta Lou Harris. Friends call me Laura. I'm an unemployed housewife. Stuck in a hellhole with nothing but sun and <laughs> effing wheat. Two weeks ago, I killed my husband. All right, well, um, there we go. <laughs> All right, let's, uh, oh, okay. So here's the head. Here's the bottom of this raven. Here's the right side, and then here's the left side. And then here's the left side. Look at that nice picture of Mr. Raven. I ain't trying to make excuses. But I think I ought to tell my story from the beginning. But I ain't looking to be forgiven by the gentleman of the jury. I know that's impossible now. But I want to give a chance to whoever's going to read this to maybe understand me. You see, my relationship with Walter started to fall apart long before the day he died. Long before we moved to this god dang farm. I even liked it at the start. Trade in the bustling city life for a humble one out in the country. Of course, wishful thinking's all it was. Women don't get much choice in this world. Take enough wrong turns and before you know it, you're low class. And I was finally starting to see that all my turns were the wrong ones too. All right, so we got, a, we got her bag up here. I got a clothespin. The metal coil inside is rusted. All right, that's that's all I got in my in my pocket is the clothespin. Here's the well. 
An old whale. I don't know why, but it gives me the creeps. We never use it. Okay. Can I go inside? Okay. Another broken, creaky step. Neil sticking out, waiting for the right moment to finally jab into my leg. I asked Walter to fix it. Not that that did any good. Walter wasn't a bad person. He almost never drank. And even when he did, he never got violent. In all our years together, he only hit me that one time, and he felt awful about it afterwards. Still, everything about him was starting to irritate me, and I reckon the feeling was mutual. That irritation turned into a burning hatred that only got stronger after we moved here. His snoring was like nails on a chalkboard. He split everything like he was a dang camel, and food got stuck in his teeth all the same, all the time. But what really got under my skin was how he always reeked of onions all the dang time. It was this disgusting, oily smell that soaked into all the furniture. But you want to know what the weird thing was? I ain't never used any onions in my cooking. A bird. Aw, he's like your friend. Scare it. Ignore it. Um, well, I don't know. A wild laugh in the kitchen <laughs> doesn't sound like <laughs> that's a clean thing to do. Oh, so I'll scare it for now. A shoe. Oh, okay. Just just flies <laughs> more in the house. <laughs> Crap. Walter. A bird gone in the house. Walter. No way in heck he didn't hear me. Listen to the radio. We interrupt this broadcast to bring you a breaking weather update. A Category 2 cyclone has been tracked approaching from the south. Meteorologists warn to expect heavy wind and rainfall in the coming days. All right. Well, you know, scary stuff's going to happen when that hits. Oh. Walt and I met toward the end of 1929. He was a little older than me. Mighty handsome, of course. He worked as a newspaper correspondent, but I couldn't tell you the name of what the paper it was. They probably quit publishing now anyway. My mother died in 1930. Walter and I got married in 1931. I got pregnant in 1933. They called it an ectopic pregnancy, and that was followed by a miscarriage. I lost my child before I even got to be a mother. I'm sorry, Loretta. Now where did it go? Ooh, get a little closer look at that moose. Such an ugly thing. Just looking at it gives me some goose pimples. Yeah, what happened to its eye? Should we check this door? Oh, check. Okay, here's the car. Our car. Walter calls it the male moth. I don't know why. I can't. I call it moth. To, to me, it's more suitable name for a jalopy like this. Anything in the mail? Nope, okay. Alright, well, let's go outside. Let's see if it's in this dark room. We got a broom, alright. Uh, windows. These windows have collected dirt for so many years. I tried cleaning them at first, but gave up eventually. <laughs> There's so much dirt that you can't even see the outside. <laughs> Dang, Loretta. Walter bought his Al Johnson and Mario Lanza records. I prefer classical music. I am in the mood to listen to that right now. Okay. No one's pushing you. Oh, what what is this? A book. Nope, nothing. Old fireplace. Okay. Guess it's kind of hard to tell what is uh available to be um like interacted with. <laughs> There's a huge crack in the wall. This house is falling apart. A piece of the ceiling's gonna fall off one of these days. And kill me in my sleep. Interest Walter's room? Alright, yeah, let's, let's go in this room. Walt got into writing around the same time. I never did understand his compulsion to write. I never lied to him, nor will I to you, but Walter ain't the most talented writer. I don't know how much confidence a man needs to want to fight against eternity, but somehow Walter had exactly that much. And that's what I liked about him. Walter's first highbrow novels weren't published. He tried arguing with Joyce, Hemingway, and Faulkner. 
He was writing reviews of books I had never heard of, but at last Walter Harris found his niche, hard-boiled detective novels, and oh boy, it turned out to be a gold mine. At first, he published his books under a pseudonym. He still had his old job, then eventually writing those thrilling, silly little stories became his career. I wasn't never a big reader. I don't consider myself to be an intelligent woman either. Intelligent women discover new chemical ailments. They write articles in liberal newspapers. They write much more than just pie recipes. They protest and fight for their rights. They demand attention and respect. But me, I never demanded anything. Uh, hello, Walter? That's a big duck you got up there. <laughs> Where's the key to what? I'll say this. Didn't you see the bird? Oh, can I click on it? Bird. What bird? And don't matter. Where's the bedroom key? I want to clean up. <laughs> Did that just catch on fire? Alright, let's uh... He's not even going to say hi. Alright, I think I got a... I got a bedroom key. It smells like onions too. Alright. What's what's in the safe here? Anything else? I'm trying to work. Okay, I guess I'll leave you to it. A jewelry box. One five one. Oh, okay, it's a safe. All right. What's this painting? A woman in a wheat field. Wheat, wheat, wheat. All we got is dang wheat. Well, you do live on a farm, Loretta. Something went wrong in New York. I never found out what exactly. Walter fell into a pit of debt and dragged me down there with him. He left the obscenely high deposit we paid in our apartment, packed our bags and ran to the cheapest rust bucket he could find. In the spring of 1947, we moved to the farm, to Walter's parents' old house. Edna and Douglas Harris died of typhus back in 1927. And so we jumped off the bumpy life raft that was our former life and rushed into the unknown. Well, this is a nice bedroom you got here, Lorietta. Alright, anything we can interact with? The radio? Let's hear about that cyclone again. Oh, okay. Ooh. Oh, man. Okay. So we need to take a look at that picture a little more. Oh, let me uh, put on this apron. Oh, there's Mr. Raven. Of all Walter's sins, his adultery was the least to concern me. Let's say his gambling affected my life in a much more serious way. His adultery was pretty obvious. Walter hadn't touched me in months. Can't say I was too upset about it, though. Nonetheless, I knew one thing for sure. <laughs> that ginger bee, Margaret. Sure did love her onions. Margaret, Margaret, Margaret. You're gonna regret this. Let's go get some gas. Oh. oh okay. What, what am I doing? <laughs> get away, bourbon. Get away, whiskey. Bourbon, whiskey. Oh, snap. Oh, I can't let it touch that. Okay, sure. Wow, there's a lot of whiskey now. A lot of bourbon. Oh, snap. Okay. Scotch. Bourbon. Whiskey. More bourbon. Scotch! Scotch moving too fast towards me. I, uh... Didn't realize I could... It dies so easily in this scene. Hello? <laughs> I felt trapped. I was suffocating in this cramped farmer's paradise. I could feel the noose tightening around my neck. I went to the bank. So, can you state your profession, ma'am? Let's go with this. And how do you pronounce that? Uh, or an anthologist? 
I'm an ornithologist by trade, but for now, I just run the house mostly. Ornith, uh, excuse me, how do you spell that? <laughs> o r n i t h o l o g i s t, a scientist, the one who studies birds. Hmm, I see. Uh, and how about the man of the house, ma'am? Uh, what does he do? Hmm. Walter's a rider. Wait! Walter Harris? You mean the rider? The affair with the killer? The black tulip? I see you're a fan. <laughs> not me, ma'am. Or not me, I'm afraid. My wife, though. Why, she just adores his books. Who would have thought right here in our backyard? <laughs> anyway. Well, ma'am, I'm sorry to say this, but we can't give you a loan. Well, not to you, anyway. But why don't you bring your husband around next time? I'm sure we can figure something out. I was hoping not to get my husband involved. I see. It's me who needs the money, not him. Hmm, in that case. Ma'am, if you urgently need money... Then what's stopping you from taking out that 30,000? What 30,000? Uh, well now, um, uh, just a moment. Mm -hmm. He shuffles through his papers. Well, 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 yes, oh. I beg your pardon, ma'am, uh, that was my mistake. I just realized that 30,000 is an insurance. Oh, what, what insurance? What, what 30,000? He peers at a sheet of paper. Uh, life insurance, ma'am. Oh, snap! Silly to me to have missed it before, but it looks like uh, Mr. Harris's publisher took out an insurance policy in his name. Here, see for yourself. In the event of death or disappearance, yada yada yada, oh, you can skip this part, the beneficiary will uh, receive a lump sum payment of $30,000. Looks like a standard contract as insurance goes. Anywho, I must apologize again, I didn't mean to cause any confusion. No, uh, thank you. Uh, you've been a great help. Glad to hear. In that case, I'll be waiting for you and Mr. Harris to drop on by. All the best, ma'am. Oh, and do allow me to remind you that all deposits and contributions are insured with us at... That clerk's words broke through his cracked, graceless lips and disappeared into thin air. Thirty thousand. Thirty thousand dollars. An incredible sum of money. It felt like the more I thought about it, the less I was able to comprehend how much that money really was. Literally, $30,000 in 1947? That's a lot of money. Walter, he hadn't even said a word. Why not? I remember getting this strange feeling. It was weak and not all there yet, but I felt it on the edge of my mind all the time. The moment I tried to catch it and pay attention to it, I left the bank, and the dry spring wind of the outside world dispelled that that feeling as if it was never there to begin with. I must have parked over here. You're at the notable bank? Ooh, is this Margaret? Laura! Hey, Laura! Hello, Margaret. It's so good to see you. How long's it been uh, since we've last seen each other? Come to think of it, I ain't seen Walt around much either. How's he doing anyway? <laughs> Why don't you tell me, you lion? Uh, I'll say, uh, he's doing wonderful. Margo, hur hurry up. It's busier than a blind dog in a meat house in here. Break's over. Move those hips, girl. All right, I'm coming. Anyway, Loretta. Oh, the girls and I, I'm gonna see a show on Saturday. You should come join us. And, uh, I wanted to talk. Margo! Look, I'll stop by if I'm in the neighborhood. You don't mind, right? I gotta shoot. Margo! I'm keeping your tips! Alright, I'm coming for Christ's sake! Oh, jeez, that ginger bee. Alright, Lorietta does not like Margaret. I lied, of course. I ain't no ornithologist. Never have been and never studied nowhere. Just a habitual lie tale. I'm a working girl. I need some way to survive when I moved to New York. I wanted to be a nurse, but failed the exams. Twice. I washed the tiles at diners, tried working out as a waitress. 
tried working as a newspaper secretary and believe it or not, even worked at a salon. I would have said I enjoyed any of it, but work is work. I need an article about a female ornithologist once. She was an expedition of some sort. I liked it. I even bought the Birds of America. And much of a bird lover though. Hard to love harbingers of disease. It was hotter than six shades of hell. I had the windows cranked all the way down and could feel the sun burning my skin through the windshield. A swarm of thoughts swirled in my mind, so I didn't notice that I was running out of gas. This old bag of bolts chewed 30 gallons to the mile, but Lady Luck smiled on me for the first time that day, and a gas station appeared out of the blue. Its concrete face rose from the middle of a cornfield, all cracked and worn like the wrinkled face of some old woman. Funny thing was, I can't say I've ever seen that gas station before, even though this was the only road leaning home. Also, Lorietta, you should be a writer. <laughs> this is how you uh, view your life right now. You should definitely be a, a writer. Um, all right, let me uh, just increase the sound a little bit. So you guys can hopefully you could hear the drums in the background there. All right, let's uh, check out this, this gas station. So they got some booze here. Feels like I drank more during the prohibition than I did my entire life. Ain't touched a drink since I was 32, but with every day I spent living on this farm, I regret that decision more and more. All right, uh, there's a lot of poison here. Um, all right, let's, uh, oh, some brochures. I'll take it. Travel by bus, go to Boston. Nice. Station tenor. Afternoon, ma'am. How's that day treating you? Could be better. It's too hot today. Okay, that was. What are these sounds? Yeah, yeah, wrong there, ma'am. I was a hundred degrees out. Could you fill uh, me up for three dollars? Sure thing. Anything else I can get you? <laughs> Probably not. If you allow me, ma'am, I may have just a cure for what ails ya. Yeah, you do? New and approved rat poison even contains its own secret formula. This is sucker get rid of rats, mice, whatever's plaguing ya. Smells like almonds too. Guaranteed to work. All for only a dollar ninety nine. I don't think that- Bah, you know what? You look like a diligent housewife, ma'am. Why don't you take a sample on the house just for you? Oh, well... I assure you, ma'am, you will not be disappointed. Alright, let's take this free rat poison. And- Okay, I thought those were like sunglasses at first. <laughs> All right, let's uh, get going to dinner, I guess. All right, what's the mini game this time? These are actually pretty cool mini games. All right, what does this say? Oh, am I supposed to? Oh, okay, all right. Okay, I guess I wasn't supposed to, to let those words I was supposed to click on those words. What am I supposed to do? All right, this black mirror seems to be very important to the story here. Hello? Anything? All right. I guess I'll just let these words touch the mirror. Let's see, it says fear. What was that, hunger? Venom? Hope? <laughs> Fate? <laughs> so I'm supposed to click on the, uh, the words in white? Okay, what does it say? Chance? There you go. Let's dive in. Uh... Ah, well, 
It's hotter than the devil's armpit outside. No kidding, thought I was gonna melt. Eat a little early to be breaking out the wine? What are you smiling for? It's all done. What is? You mean you finished your book? Yep. But but that's that, that's wonderful. Why didn't you? The publishers already gave me the green light. I sent them the initial chapters. I don't want to jinx anything before it's set in stone. But they're saying the folks from Metro Silvermeyer are interested. Might even turn into a motion picture, they said. Just imagine. Starring Clark Gable. I, I thought he quit acting. Then Harry Cooper. Who cares? That's not the gosh darn point. Hollywood, Laura. You're right. I'm sorry. Oh, Walter. I I'm so happy. G good for you. Good for us, sweetheart. Can, can the wine wait a little? I'll get to fixing us a real nice supper. How's about you cook us that steak you know I love? I honestly didn't expect that. Uh, I don't know who's talking. For a moment it felt as though everything could change. Oh, okay, maybe it's Loretta. It was a f flash of hope. <laughs> Obviously you gotta add some salt first. Walter publishes his novel and we return to New York to our apartment on 12th Avenue, just as if we never left, and life goes back to normal again. Alright, let's, uh, I guess let's dice the vegetables. But still, he'd made promises before. He'd already found another woman before I could start unpacking my dang suitcase. He's gambled us into the ground when we were already dirt poor. Why should I think any of that'll stop in New York? No, something's deep inside me. Something strange had been triggered, and I couldn't stop it. <laughs> I had poison? Well, maybe we shouldn't have the poison yet. Um, we gotta really figure out what's on Walter's mind and what on earth happened with the life insurance business. Hey, how's it going? Alrighty. Coming right up. That would be our last supper together. I told him I was leaving. Told him I knew about Margaret. Told him I couldn't live like that anymore. Walton seemed too broken up about it. You're making a big mistake. He said, mouthful of steak. But you know what? I, I feel like for the first time in my life, I'm actually doing something right. <laughs> that night, I couldn't sleep. The storm ended just as suddenly as it started. The weather cleared up. The clouds disappeared and the stars glimmered in the sky. It was the kind of thing you could all see out on a farm. I dreaded the thought of what I could have done, but I didn't, luckily. I decided not to take our scar savings. Instead, I just pawned the Redding Wing and bought a bus ticket out to the West Coast, to California. I got a younger brother who lives there, though we ain't seen each other for years. Like a pioneer or some character from a Steinbeck novel, or the thousands who fall victims to the Great Depression, I had no idea what was waiting for me. I reckon some old could, some would condemn me for what I did. Maybe others would tell me it's too late to start over. That there's no use in running from who you are. That you can't outrun fate. But I say heck with them. It's never too late to start living. And I knew it wouldn't be easy. But I truly felt like there was a new beginning ahead of me. Who are you trying to fool? Yourself, maybe? A new beginning? Well said. But it wasn't like that at all, Loretta. You know that. He's talking with his mouth full. Oh, mmm, the steak is delish. Thank you. Last time I ate this good was back in Big Apple. You barely touched your. I ain't hungry. Well. <laughs> Let's see, uh... She, uh... Well, she probably doesn't want to talk about Margaret, she just told... Wait, did she tell him or is this like back in time? Ah, oh, sir, I'll just save this. So we going back? So, does that mean we're going back now? We can finally pack our bags and run away from this place? He chomps loudly. Hum chomp chomp chomp. Run away from here? You're kidding, right? Why not? Come on, Lo. You you can't run away from who you are. 
He spits out a half-chewed piece of carrot. You put too many carrots in this. Besides, the book ain't finished. It still needs editing. Y you know, I've been doing a lot of thinking lately. About what? Uh, about how different my life could have been. But it isn't. <laughs> and that's why you chose to sue the grieving widow? I went to the bank today. I should not tell him that I found out, or Loretta found out about the life insurance, I'll say this. And that's why you chose to sue the grieving widow? What? What's that supposed to mean? You know exactly what that's supposed to mean. I already told you. It's over. You must think I'm dumber than a box of rocks. What are you trying to achieve here, huh? Why can't we just celebrate? Enjoy a nice supper, like ordinary civilized folk. I fed up with your tricks, Walter. I fed up with you treating me like crap. Fed up with lingering this godforsaken dump with all the racists and whores. Nobody forced you to move out here, Loretta. Listen, I, I know you blame me for what happened to John. He slams his fist onto the table. <laughs> nice effing supper. You just couldn't help yourself, could you? Why'd you need to bring this crap up again? Why now? What is wrong with you today? No, you're right. Let's just keep it bottled up inside. I'll hush. I'll be a good housewife. And you can keep effing around with that ginger slut. Then everyone will be happy. Enough! I'm not listening to this crap anymore. And if you must know, I do. I do blame you. Oh, finally. The brave man comes out and says it. I've read the police report. You're such a hypocrite. Gah. Laura, I had no idea you could be so full of crap. I've read the... Uh, well? Was this murder? M U R D E R. What does that spell? <laughs> oh, E. Der. <laughs> Murderer. Okay. All right. Oh, okay. I guess we're dragging his body outside. <laughs> we're gonna just throw him in a well. Alrighty, you gotta be smarter than this. weird just like pushing the space bar every like one second Walter looks like he's trying to say something but only the sound of gurgling can be heard as he slowly chokes to death <laughs> just to apologize for killing him with rat poisoning or this is your fault or oh jeez let's say this this is your fault I must admit, I don't like it when people say honestly or to tell you the truth. It always gives the impression that they've been shamelessly lying to you to that point. But there's something transcendental about murder. Something beyond our understanding despite how regular and natural it seems. Otherwise, why else would anyone do it? Oh, don't accuse a woman of being a liar when she doesn't know how to be honest with herself. Stillborn. Like my first child, like a poet who speaks no languages, like a deaf, blind, and mute person in a world of sound, color, and signs, I won't reach the truth of words. They can't give it shape. There is one truth I know. Walter is dead. Dead. You don't like people, do you? I didn't say that, but truth be told, I don't expect any good to come from them. Oh, this is her uh, therapist? Well, it kind of looks like a little cute little goblin. He's like smiling, but uh, the goblin is not a choice here. So I'll say it looks like a mask. Do you think people want to hurt you? I think we're wasting our time here. Why is that? Look, I know how this works. First, we look at some pictures together and have a nice little chat. Then tomorrow you dig into my brain with a metal rod. You're exaggerating. Look, lectonomies have alleviated. Oh uh, wait, is this the therapist? Or her lectonomies have alleviated, uh, elevated, alleviated. Sorry, suffering for a great many people. In your case, however, I doubt it will be required. I like to believe that. Let's continue, shall we? 
what does this look like to you? Uh, well, this is an option. Um, uh, you know, um, it doesn't look like a rat to me. Uh, if this is a call, oh, okay, okay. So this can look like a collarbone and maybe some lungs, but uh, that that isn't an option either. It definitely doesn't look like a well. And why is this an option? Um, well, maybe the, uh, this is the uterus. This is the fallopian tubes here. So, yeah, sure, I'll say that. <laughs> hmm. Interesting. What is? Your associative pattern. My husband calls them tricks. But if he brought if he brought you here, wasn't it? But it was he who brought you here, wasn't it? So pay attention. Okay, these what are these pictures here? Um wheat. A crow, a cradle, I say eyes. Is something wrong? Yeah. These are just splotches. Ain't nothing to see in them. Whatever I do see is only my imagination. This ain't fair. I ain't done nothing wrong. La laugh isn't fair. At your age, it's high time you realize that. Oh, don't be so gloomy. How did that saying go? In Italy, under the rule of the Borgia? Terror, murder, and bloodshed reigned. That it ended up giving birth to Michelangelo, Da Vinci, and the Renaissance. In Switzerland, brotherly love, democracy, and peace were established for four or five hundred years. And do you know what they produced? The cuckoo clock. Interesting. All right, uh, let's uh, see what happens with the snail. I woke up with an awful pain spreading through my whole body. It came in waves, like one blow after another. One eye was all swollen and watery. Felt like it was gonna burst. Heck, I wanted it to burst. Not that it helped none. No, the pain was focused somewhere else. When I opened my eyes, first thing I saw was a crooked, rusty nail sticking out of my foot. It went through my own skin, so I tugged it free. Oh, jeez, why is this nail? <laughs> Son of a bitch, I was ready to howl, ready to scream at the top of my dang lungs. Best I could muster was a whimper, though. It was like the top of that metal nail was smiling up at me like a cashier cat. Okay, one more try. Stay calm. Breathe. Come on, low focus. Ouch. <laughs> Holy crap. Dang. Gosh dang porch. <laughs> Gosh dang nail. Why couldn't you hammer it like I asked? The heck's wrong with you, Walter? Trying to make it easier for me to finish you off? Heck, why am I even asking you? Ain't like you ever knew which head and hammer to use anyway. This is some wicked irony, all right. Oh lord, I can see rust stuck in the wound. Dang. Ugh, ain't no time to dwell on that now. All right, one more time. Did, did they have like a tetanus vaccine back then? Again. Come on. Dang, Loretta, should you go to the hospital or doctors? Oh. Well, uh, hopefully you're okay, Loretta. The gaping wounds stare back at me. An awful blood red gash. Last night felt like a bad dream, about to fade into memory. But still, my ripped up muddy dress, my aching leg, the puddle of my own vomit. They all suggested otherwise. I need to get rid of those reminders as soon as I can. <laughs> I'm gonna be sick. <laughs> oh, jeez. Ugh. Alright, reminder of the Last Supper. Ugh, what a mess. I'll clean it up. Should I clean up my vomit? <laughs> Leftovers from yesterday's supper. Let me just step on it with my bare feet. All right, let's uh, let's leave it on, you know. Let's just leave it on. Where am I going to bed? Anything I can click on? Hello? Anything? All right, so Lorietta just <laughs> murdered her husband. You gotta take off this dress first. 
I'll think about the rest later. Alrighty then. Um, what happened to your dress, Loretta? Oh, my head. My leg hurts too. I saw some pills in the bathroom. I can't take this any longer. Is this the bathroom? Or, oh. I don't know. Where's the bathroom? Is this the bathroom? Was the bathroom in her bedroom? Nope, okay. Let's uh, go through here. Okay. This, this leads outside. I ain't ready to go out yet. Need to change out of these clothes first. <laughs> There's the shovel I'm gonna need later, perhaps. Oh, there's the poison. <laughs> I probably should uh, hide that there. At least a pleasant almond scent. He was in line. All right. Um, I guess I gotta find the bathroom. It's probably not down in this basement. Nope. Okay. And what's in this room? This is the dining room, right? All right. So let's go upstairs. Oh, the bathroom's right here? It's kind of hard to tell, like, where you can go. Okay. Let's go to the top cabinet. Bingo! I knew you were here somewhere. They expired. A long time ago, too. Should I... Um, yeah, not sure. Uh, but I guess it also depends on how long they were expired for. Uh, yeah, let's take them anyway. Mm, what does it matter? Not like things can get any worse. Alright. Let's go change, Loretta. Do 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 Alright. Let's take a look at your wardrobe. <laughs> Move away from the wardrobe. Alright, let's change. That's better. Now to get rid of this dress. Alright. I guess uh, we'll go bury the dress? Burn the dress? Probably burning. Walter gave me this dress for our anniversary. But I ain't got any other choice now. Gotta get rid of it. Okay. Okay. No worries. Let's go. How do I, how do I get rid of Oh. Let's pick it up first. Who the heck could that be? Laura! You look like you've been- Oh jeez, yeah, that's the first thing you want to say to someone. You look like you've seen better days. What happened? Mind calling out Walter for me? <laughs> yeah, let's um... Let's, let's kill Margaret too. <laughs> uh, I'll say uh, he ain't home yet. Walter ain't home. Walter ain't here. Ain't here? That's odd. How long he's gonna be out for? I ain't his secretary. He doesn't tell me anything. Margaret pu puts on a puppy dog face with her big, beautiful hazel eyes. It softens Laurie at his heart a blow. When I didn't see him this morning, I thought he'd run away with you. So you... you... you know? About you and Walter? Come on, Margaret, I ain't blind. I say get off my property. You know what, Margaret? I don't want to see your stupid red face or your cheap dress around here anymore. Huh? What are you, death? Laura, what? Or maybe your mama dropped you when you were a baby. How dare you? Walter! Walter, are you in there? Don't bother, whore. He won't hear you. You be. The heck are you up to? Get off of my property, you <laughs> Jeez. Gosh dang heck. And stay off. Things didn't go all that well with Margaret. I may have felt a little better in the end, but it was clear that dang, that dumb bee wasn't about to drop the issue. Well, she should at least keep her distance. For now, anyway. Alright, now for the manuscript. It ought to be in the study. Alright. What in the same hill? Sounds like it's coming from the kitchen. Okay.
What is that noise? Oh man, it's in the basement. Gosh dang, it's always the basement. The storm destroyed several power lines yesterday. Dozens were left without power. Authorities remind citizens to be aware of looters. In other news. <laughs> Don't risk it. Um, yeah, I guess let's check the basement. Why is it so dark in here? My foot hurts. Where's that sound coming from? Also, why do you not have like a candle or a flashlight at least? Where's the lamp? Smells wrench has all get out down here. Pops making weird noises again. This ain't the first time, but Walter would usually take care of it. Today just ain't my day. Well, there's a oh, it's the dead bird. A portrait? Let's check out the dead bird. Dead bird, huh? Rats must have had supper. Let's, I guess, let's remove this fabric? A portrait of Walter's mother, Edna. It's covered in dust. Aw oh, man, please don't tell me the ghosts are gonna like, come back and haunt us. Alright. Take a look at the steel bar. <laughs> Give it a whack. Wait, I'm just whacking the pipes? Lord, I don't know if this is the right way to fix this here. Phew, that should do it. <laughs> Alright, Edna, don't uh, come back to haunt us now. Oh, jeez. Oh, no. Edna? Relax, Laura. It's just your imagination is all. Oh, right. The manuscript. But gosh dang it. We had to remove the cloth from the picture frame and unleashed Edna's ghost. I rarely step foot in Walter's study. Everything's here just as it was yesterday. An open bottle of bourbon and that old beat up typewriter. Sheets of paper tied with a ribbon lie next to it. Chapters of straw bull. The rest of the manuscript should be in the safe. An open envelope lay next to it. It's an informal letter of an official looking paper, certified by a secretary. Dear Mr. Harris, Walter, the bull is positively sensational. And though I do believe we could give the title some consideration, I can say without a shadow of doubt that this is the best work yet, and I'm only halfway through reading it. I don't want to get ahead of myself, but I already spoke to Thompson at MCM, and they want to talk. I am very glad that you're in business, my friend. Send me the rest as soon as it's ready. The contracts are drifted. There's just a couple of formalities left. But yes, I already ordered the cover designs. You're going to love them. Sincerely, Jerry. Oh. Jerry. Ahem. Stamp Gerald Foster Schaffner. Atlantic Press Publishing House. <laughs> Jerry has a very nice voice. And they were waiting. The details. Oh, jeez. Details have been negotiated. Contracts signed. They just need a little push was all. I made myself comfortable in the leather desk chair, adjusted the carriage, and began tapping. Dear Mr. Schaefer, I regret to inform you that my husband, Walter Harris, has gone missing. It's possible something may have happened to him, or perhaps he simply ran out on his love-deprived wife. His reasoning's beyond me. Okay, maybe you shouldn't leave this in a letter if it's, you know, more evidence. I'm writing because you were interested in Walter's latest manuscript, Straw Bull. By coincidence, the manuscript currently sits in my possession. The original, uh, there are no copies. Mr. Schaefer, I assume you are a busy man, so I cut to the chase. As far as I know, your company has taken out a life insurance policy on Walter. Due to this extraordinary development, I must ask that you send a check with the amount applicable in the event of his passing if you wish to see his manuscript in its entirety. Despite my disagreements with Walter, I am convinced that readers and fans of his talent should not be deprived of his latest masterpiece. I will send the manuscript the day the check is received, as I understand that it, it rightfully belongs to you and your firm, which has done so much for our family. Yours faithfully, Loretta Lowe Harris. Let's lick that envelope. All done. Now I just gotta wait. And the pain in my leg was getting worse. So on my way to the post office, I decided to stop at that gas station again. But something wasn't right. And also, dang, the sun is moving fast. That gas station looked different that day. Kind of like something was missing. In that same vein, I was seeing everything in a brand new light. 
Kinda like looking like through a cracked microscope glass or something. Although I ain't ever looked through a microscope in my entire life. <laughs> Alright, so that that's original, uh, I guess, uh, cashier dude is replaced with a different one. Alright everyone, I think I'm going to stop here for now. Thank you so much for watching my first video of Loretta. Uh, it seems like it's going to be an interesting story. I wonder, I know, I, I mean like we already took care of Walter it seems, so I'm really curious to see who else is going to be, you know, I guess trying to kill Loretta or I guess trying to figure out what Loretta did to Walter. So I guess we'll see in the next video. Again, thank you so much everyone and I will see you next time. Bye.